This video was brought to you by my loyal patrons. Pledge today and receive exclusive perks. Link in the description. What is in a number? Locomotives come in all shapes and sizes. Some are giant and striking. Some are tiny and silly. But no matter how different or far spread locomotives around the world are, they all have one thing in common. Every single one of them has a number. Engine numbers are special. They are a symbol that that engine belongs to someone, somewhere, and each one tells a story. The engines in Thomas and Friends are no different. Every character has a number. Well, most anyway. You don't even have a number! And while some numbers may seem arbitrary, I'm here to tell you all that almost every single one has a meaning and a reason behind it. For some, it may be in reference to the order of which they arrive to the railway. For some, it may be a reference to the real-life engine that their character is based on. And for some, it may be an intentional in-joke with the people behind the scenes. I got the idea for this video from a Thomas DeBunk short that I made a long time ago, going over some of the real engine numbers in the series. And I thought, this would be a great topic for a big video, going over every single one. It's a great opportunity to go into the characters' histories and talk about some real-life engines for a change. We will be covering everyone today, though with some exceptions. We will not be covering the narrow gauge engines, because frankly, the stories behind all their numbers are pretty much the same, nor numbered road vehicles like the pack members, nor international characters, with a few exceptions being some engines who work on the mainland. All the numbers being covered here are of standard gauge Island of Sodor residents, or engines who are regular visitors. Now of course, I am aware that many of you watching already know a lot of this, or it might be obvious why an engine's number is what it is. And for those of you, I still encourage you to sit down and watch. And hopefully, just maybe, you might discover something new about a character that you didn't know before. Because as we'll see, the histories of some engine's numbers are quite interesting. We'll start with the lowest number first and work our way up the list. We'll begin with the steam engines, and then move on to the diesels. Let's go! Number one belongs to no other than Thomas. Like, duh, who doesn't know that? Thomas has always been the number one engine in the series ever since day one. Interestingly enough, he was the only engine for a while in the early books to have a visible number. The reason being that series creator Wilbert Audrey never planned to give the engines numbers at first. Thomas was the exception, and the reason Thomas had one was because Thomas the character was based on a wooden engine that he had made his son Christopher, which was blue and had a number one on its side. Thomas's appearance changed a bit when he made the transition to the illustrations, but the signature features were kept including his token number one. Now in canon, Thomas being the number one has reason for it. During the construction of the Northwestern Railway in 1914, many engines from neighboring railways such as the Furness Railway were brought to the island on loan to help build the line, and many stayed on after the railway's opening. None of these engines were officially owned by the railway though. Thomas, however, has a bit of a sketchy origin. The E2 class tank engine from the London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway somehow found his way up towards Sodor during the First World War, a time when resources were needed everywhere and engines were being sent all over the country. He found himself being brought onto Sodor as one of several engines to help with the railway's construction. Upon inquiry a few years later, Topham Hatt I discovered the LBSCR had written off their lost engine in the war, and so he had a little issue in acquiring it for himself, quietly under the table. So by technicality, Thomas became the first engine officially owned by the newly formed Northwestern Railway in 1920. He has thus worn his number one with pride ever since. Now it's never been made clear which E2 Thomas is. Only 10 E2s were built, and only the last five had the extended side tanks that Thomas has. 
only two of which were in service by 1915, the year Thomas went to Sodor, numbers 105 and 106. He is likely one of these two, or is a completely fictional add-on member that the LBSCR preferred to just forget existed. In the TV series, there's a much different backstory. The 2015 origin story movie, The Adventure Begins, shows that Thomas arrived to Sodor much later after many of the other engines. When he first arrived, Thomas was still in his previous paint job from the LBSCR, and was numbered 70. The Adventure Begins was made in honor of the series 70th anniversary, and Thomas's original number here is a direct reference to that. In real life, no E2s wore the number 70. The LBSCR's 70 belonged to the Terrier Poplar, one of Stepney's class. It's explained the engines all inherited their numbers from the previous coffee pot engines that worked the railway before them. The last number one was a coffee pot. The coffee pot engines used to look after one of the branch lines, but they don't work there now. Once one was decommissioned, that engine's number was hand-me-downed onto the next newest engine. Glynn was the original number one, and was the last of the coffee pots in service. He was eventually withdrawn, and his number was handed down to the newly arrived Thomas. Glynn seemed to have no hard feelings about this, and even told Thomas to wear that number with pride. Don't worry, Mr. Coffee Pot, I will. But don't worry, Glynn was eventually restored sometime later, and he now resides at Ulfstead Castle as a part of the Earl's Railway Museum. Moving on to number two, which is worn by no other than Edward. Like Thomas, Edward is number two because he was the second engine officially acquired by the Northwestern Railway. Edward was a K2 class from the Furness Railway and was one of many engines that was loaned to Sodor to help with the railway's construction in 1915. Edward stayed on Sodor for many years, as the Furness found him to be a shy steamer, and they weren't particularly in a rush to get him back after the work was completed. So, Edward just stayed on Sodor, even though he was still technically owned by the Furness. But in 1921, Topham Hat I pushed the paperwork through and officially purchased him, making him the railway's second engine. However, he, like the other engines, did not wear a visible number until the mid-30s, when the Northwestern decided to finally paint them all on their engines in the same style as Thomas's. After much careful maintenance and extensive overhauls over the years, the Northwestern has turned Edward into quite the reliable engine. In the TV series, Edward acquired his number the same way Thomas did, by inheriting it from the coffee pot before him. It's never directly stated this is so, but it can be assumed for the first few engines. Number three belongs to no other than Henry. By 1922, the Northwestern Railway were in search of a designated engine to haul their express service. Topham Hat I sought out a Robinson Atlantic and was promised one, but was swindled by the sellers, who delivered him, well, Henry. Upon recalling the event, Topham rather famously remarked, I wanted an Atlantic, and that <laughs> sent me that. Henry was an experimental design, allegedly based on stolen drawings of a proposed locomotive by Sir Nigel Gresley. His design was very flawed, and he could not steam properly. In the face of their motive power crisis, though, Topham Hatt had no choice but to keep Henry, making him the railway's third officially owned engine although Topham would probably have rather forgotten his railway even had a number three. Hmm, said the fat director. I never liked these big engines always going wrong. Henry's failure to meet expectations directly led to the purchase of Gordon, who arrived on Sodor the very next year. Gordon was built in 1921 by Sir Nigel Gresley himself for the Great Northern Railway as the prototype to his 2B A1 class Pacifics. His existence was kept hush-hush from the public, and apart from test runs, was never put into regular traffic, or even received an official Great Northern number. Gordon was kept on by the Great Northern until the first batch of A1s were built, of which included his famous brother, Flying Scotsman. 
and thus was no longer needed. He was sold off to the highest bidder, who happened to be the Northwestern Railway, in search of a better designed express engine. Gordon arrived on Sodor in 1923 and became the railway's fourth officially owned engine. Number five is worn by James, because he was, you guessed it, the railway's fifth engine. James was built around 1912 or so for the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway as an experimental variant of their 28 class with a leading pony truck. The new front axle was added in hopes of curing the 28's tendency to nosedive at high speeds. The experiment didn't produce the results desired, and sometime after grouping, the LMS didn't see much use for him. Like the rest, James was handed down to the Northwestern Railway in 1924 or so, becoming the fifth engine officially owned by the railway. I love how Sodor was basically just like a dumping ground for all these bigger railways unwanted poor performers. It's truly an island of misfits. Next up is number 6, which is worn by no other than Percy. Percy's origins are very sketchy, and no one is quite sure what class of engine he started life as. He had many different owners, who all rebuilt him or added new parts to him, including his bunker, which he, as an 040 saddle tank, likely did not have when he was first built. Nonetheless, Percy eventually was dumped off at a workshop on the mainland in the mid-twenties or so. The Northwestern Railway was in need of a new pilot engine at Tidmouth, and Sir Topham Hatt stumbled across Percy here on his search. He bought him that day, and Percy became the sixth engine officially owned by the Northwestern. Moving on to number seven, which is worn by no other than Toby. Toby worked on the mainland on the real-life Whiz Beach and Upwell Tramway of the Great Eastern Railway in East Anglia. Toby is, interestingly enough, the first real engine introduced in the series, as his Great Eastern number has been revealed to have been 127. 127 received many number changes over the years, becoming 7127 under the LNER in 1923, 8221 under the LNER's renumbering scheme, and finally 68221 under British Railways in 1948. This was his number until his line closed down, and he found new life on the island of Sodor in 1951, becoming the railway's seventh officially owned engine. Number 8 belongs to good old Duck. Duck is a pannier tank from the Great Western Railway, where at some point he was renumbered 5741. This was not the number he was assigned when first built. As Duck recalls, he was a station pilot at London Paddington. Rubbish, said Duck. London's Paddington. I know. I work there. And the real 5741 worked in Wales for most its life. One theory that I personally like suggests that Duck was overhauled at Swindon the same time as the real 7541, and the two's numbers might have been accidentally swapped. What his original number was, when built, remains unknown. British Railways eventually put Duck aside and later sold him off to the Northwestern Railway in 1955. While Duck is technically the railway's eighth engine, he has never worn the number. Sir Topham Hatt, being a Swindon-trained man, was sympathetic and allowed Duck to wear a Great Western livery, complete with his Great Western number plate to match. In the TV series, Duck has always been depicted with a number 8 on his capsides. Number 9 and number 10 go to the Great Scots themselves, Donald and Douglas. Donald and Douglas are 652-class locomotives from the Caledonian Railway, a subclass of the more well-known 812-class. They were the final two of the class built, and their original numbers reflect so. Their original Caledonian numbers are unknown, but their numbers under the LMS would have been 17646 and 17647, respectively. Under British Railway's ownership starting in 1948, they became 57646, and 57647 respectively. These numbers are in jokes, as the class was only numbered up to 57645 in real life, 
making Donald and Douglas entirely fictional add-ons to the class. In 1959, the Northwestern Railway faced another motive power crisis, and Sir Topham Hatt purchased 57646 from the Scottish region. To his shock, two engines arrived. Now then, which of you is 57646? That, sir, is just what we can of mind. The twins, fearing one would be scrapped without the other, escaped to Sodor together, and purposely had their numbers removed so Sir Topham Hatt wouldn't know who was who. I hear you've lost your numbers, he said. How did that happen? They mourn her slyly slip it off, sir. You ken who it is. I know. Accidentally on purpose. After some shenanigans and a deputation held by the engines to keep both on Sodor, Sir Topham Hatt finally agreed and Donald and Douglas became the railway's 9th and 10th engines, respectively. Now on to number 11, which is worn by Oliver. Oliver, like Duck, started life on the Great Western Railway. He is one of their auto-fitted 4800-class locomotives, and supposedly started life as 4836. When the class was renumbered into the 1400 class, his number became 1436, and this is the number he wore when he made his famous escape from the cutter's torch to Sodor in 1967. Like Duck, Sir Topham Hatt was sympathetic to Oliver's origins, and allowed him to keep his Great Western livery and his number. However, it is believed this is not the number Oliver was marked as officially in the Great Western's books as the real 1436 was scrapped in real life in 1958, a whole nine years before Oliver made his escape to Sodor. While purely speculatory, it's believed Oliver's crew swapped his number with a scrapped 1400 class tank to throw British railways off their scent when they escaped. If that is what really happened, I'm sure it's a secret Oliver will take to his grave. So in this case, his actual original number is unknown. To make things even more confusing, 1436 isn't even consistently the number Oliver is illustrated with. A couple of the illustrations in Oliver the Western Engine depict him with the number 1420 on his buffer beam. It is hard to make out and can only be seen in the HD rescans of the artwork present in the 2015 onwards releases. The number though likely doesn't mean anything, and was probably carried over from the photos the illustrators were given for reference. The real 1420 is a preserved 1400 class on the South Devon Railway, and served as inspiration for Oliver the character, with a name that is even very similar, Bulliver. The TV series kept things simple, and Oliver has always worn his number 11 on his cab sides. Moving on to number 12 now, which belongs to no other than Emily. Emily is our first character on this list that does not have a railway series origin. She is completely an invention of the TV series. Introduced in season 7, Emily had no visible number for the longest time, and for pretty much the remainder of the show, she never wore one, despite becoming a main cast member. She doesn't have a number, but that's not something she worries about. That all changed in the final season, season 24, however. In the episode, Emily to the Rescue, Emily proves herself worthy after saving the Express from a nasty accident. As a reward for her bravery, Sir Topham Hatt declares it is finally time she had a number of her own. It's also time you had a number, because I know I can always count on you. <laughs> <laughs> Emily finally gains her number 12 and for the rest of the final season, wears it on her tender sides. Technically, Sodor does have a number 13, but it belongs to an engine that only appeared once, and in neither the books or the TV series, only in a magazine story from 1998 called The Unlucky Engine. This black saddle tank arrived to Sodor from the mainland to help Donald and Douglas. This engine seemed to always wear the number 13, and as a result, was rather unlucky. After a series of mishaps, the engine was sent for repairs. During repairs, he gained a larger firebox, which seemed to cure his jinx. He still wears the number 13, and was never seen or mentioned again. 
They didn't even bother to give this poor guy a name. Number 14 is worn by everyone's favorite engine, Charlie. Charlie came to Sodor from the mainland in season 13, wearing a purple livery and the number 14 on his cab sides. While no reason in canon is given to why he is 14, his name and number seem to parallel the real-life Charwelton, a Manny Wardle saddle tank preserved on the Kent and East Sussex Railway. Though it is technically a different class of saddle tank to Charlie, Charlie himself being an L-class, it seems his number was lifted directly from this one. We're going to see that a lot with the TV characters. Many of their numbers are lifted straight from the real engines they used as a basis. But you know what? I think I'm wrong here. A couple of my early access patrons pointed this out. Charlie's 14 likely comes from him being the 14th standard gauge character modeled and rigged in CGI. Following the eight Steam Team members, Spencer, Hero, Diesel, Mavis, and Rosie. And yeah, after hearing that, I'm sure that's more than likely the real reason. Thank you for clarifying that, patrons. Moving on to 15 now, which is worn by Samson. Samson is not owned by the Northwestern Railway, so his number doesn't correlate to the railway's roster. He just happens to be 15. He is a privately owned tank engine from the mainland that has regularly visited Sodor since season 18. The origins of Samson's number are pretty unknown. If I had to guess, it's a reference to the year his slate of episodes were due to release in 2015. Number 16 belongs to an engine that never had a name, only a number. 16. Like Samson, 16 is not owned by the Northwestern Railway, nor has he ever visited it. 16 was a saddle tank engine that worked at a steelworks on the mainland that Wilbert knew of. His scheming ways got him into trouble one day when he pushed his luck too far and toppled cab over wheels down an embankment. Wilbert remarks that 16 got better than he deserved, as he is now preserved somewhere in the Midlands. 16's number appears to have no origins in canon. It is likely just the number that the steelworks gave him. It is possible, though, that the number is derived from the Weems Private Railway's number 16, which is the same class of saddle tank as 16, and replaced an engine on the line that suffered an accident very similar to his. Our next number chronologically in the lineup is 18, which is worn by Nia. Nia joined the cast in the movie Big World Big Adventures. Thomas, during his adventures abroad, met Nia in Africa. The two traveled the world together, and Nia followed him back to Sodor, where she was accepted into the Northwestern Railway family. Nia seemed to be numbered 18 before Northwestern ownership and the number is indeed a reference to the year the movie she debuted in came out, 2018. The next number is 20, which is worn by Hurricane. Hurricane, like Samson and 16, is not owned by the Northwestern Railway, nor has ever visited it. Hurricane is owned by and works at the Mainland Steelworks Company. In reality, his 20 was pulled from the engine he is based on, Great Eastern Railway's Class A55 Decapod, a behemoth of an experimental tank engine with 10 drive wheels, and was also numbered 20. While it's never explicitly stated, the two sharing the same number seems to imply that Hurricane is meant to be this same engine, as only one was ever built in real life. In real life, the Decapod was rebuilt into an 080 tender engine in 1906 and scrapped shortly later in 1913 for being non-standard. But in the Thomas universe, it seems it was never rebuilt, and went on to find a second life at the Steelworks. Moving on to 22 now, which is worn by Rebecca. Rebecca was introduced in season 22 as a new express engine to help Gordon. Her 22 on the surface seems to be in reference to the season she was introduced in, Season 22, but that doesn't really track with her development history. Here's where things get interesting with her. Rebecca was originally meant to appear in Season 21, but her episodes were cut to speed along production on Big World Big Adventures, 
holding them over to season 22. According to her concept art, Rebecca was always intended to be number 22, which seems like a strange number to give her if she was meant to debut in season 21. The following is all just a theory, of course, but humor me here. Edward was written out of the main cast in the season 21 finale, A Shed for Edward, and before the season was shortened, Rebecca would have arrived and took his empty berth at Tidmouth Sheds only a few episodes later. Perhaps her 22 is a play on the fact she replaced the original number 2. She's now the second number 2. 2 and 2. Hence, 22. Hmm. It's kinda in poor taste in my opinion, but again, it's totally speculatory. But hey, I don't know of a better explanation. Moving up to 27, which belongs to Harvey. Harvey, the crane engine, made his debut in Season 6, as the first steam engine to be purchased for the railway since Oliver in Season 3. Harvey seemed to have his 27 before arriving to the railway, implying it may have been a works number or belonging to his previous owner, and he just seemed to keep it when he came to Sodor. The real reason behind the 27 is, again, speculation but I believe it's in reference to Harvey being the 27th standard gauge engine introduced in the series. This is of course assuming he was concepted before Salty though, as Salty debuts in the episode right before his. Into the 30s now, with the next number being 37, which is worn proudly by Rosie. Rosie gained her number as a part of her redesign in Season 21. Prior to her repaint, she did not have a number, but now wears NWR on her tanks and 37 on her cab sides. Again, this is speculation, but I believe this seemingly random number is in reference to her being the 37th standard gauge engine introduced in the series. The font and style of her redesign seems to have been inspired by a livery worn by a preserved member of Rosie's class, number 72 of the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. Jumping ahead to 51 now, which is worn by the legendary Hero, the master of the railway. Hero, like Samson, like 16, like Hurricane, is not owned by the Northwestern Railway, and his number appears to be from his old railway in Japan. Hiro is a part of the rather well-known D-51 class of Japanese national railways, and his number seems to be in reference to the class number. In real life, there was in fact a D-51 with the number 51. Unlike Hiro though, it was an earlier build of the D-51 class, with its dome flush with its funnel. The engine was indeed preserved, until it was very recently scrapped in 2020 due to issues arising from it being stored outside. Pretty unfortunate, though not a huge loss, as over a whopping 170 D-51s are preserved in Japan. No shortage of these fellas. Next up is 55, worn by the ever-cheerful Stepney. Stepney is one of the few engines on this list that is actually real and preserved on the Bluebell Railway in England. Stepney is, again, not owned by the Northwestern Railway, and his 55 is the number worn by the real Stepney when it was first built in 1875. Stepney is a part of the London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway's A1 class. 50 of these guys were built and were all numbered from 35 to 84. Stepney would become 655 when the LBSCR renumbered their locos, then 2655 under Southern Railway ownership in 1923, and then 32655 under British Railways in 1948. When preserved in 1960, he was repainted into his original improved engine green livery, complete with his original 55. And this was the condition he was in when he visited Sodor in 1962. Moving on up to 66, which is worn by Wyth. Wyth made his debut in Season 11 as Sodor's designated garbage engine. 
My name's Whiff because I'm a bit smelly. In season 14, it was revealed that Whiff is based at a waste dump on the island, depicting him as a sort of industrial engine that sorts wagons. Whiff's number is pulled directly from the engine he is based on, Aerolite, a unique 224 tank engine built to haul the Northeastern Railway's mechanical engineer's saloon coach. A pretty prestigious job, and a rather bizarre choice to base your industrial garbage engine character on. Aerolite is preserved and can be seen today at the National Railway Museum in York. We're moving on to the big numbers now. The next, chronologically, is shockingly 783, which is worn by Merlin. Merlin made his debut in the 2017 movie Journey Beyond Sodor. Merlin, like several others on this list, is not owned by the Northwestern Railway and currently works at the Mainland Steelworks Company. Merlin's number is, again, pulled straight from the engine he is based on. The experimental King Arthur class number 783, Sir Gilmir, an engine fitted with three chimneys as a wartime experiment. The idea was that the extra chimneys meant more excess smoke would be spread out, covering the train and making it harder to spot from bombers overhead. This experiment was not a success, and the engine was converted back to normal soon after. Merlin appears to be this real-life engine in canon, his backstory being the same. Have you noticed his three funnels? That was an experiment to make his smoke and steam disperse so you couldn't see him so easily. But it didn't work at all. His name, however, is pulled from another King Arthur class, the more unremarkable number 740, Merlin. Neither of these King Arthurs are preserved today. Next up is 1014, which is worn by Ryan. Ryan made his debut in the 2015 movie Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure as a new engine to help construct and later work on the new Harwick branch line. I'm gonna be completely honest. Ryan's number is the first on this list to completely stump me. I have no idea what it's in reference to. Ryan is based on an N2 class of the Great Northern Railway. And as far as I can tell, no N2 ever wore the number 1014 in service. It was worn by a Great Northern C2 class, though that doesn't relate to Ryan in any way. I thought it might be a date, perhaps a birthday of someone related to Ryan, such as his original voice actor, Eddie Redmayne, but he was born on January 6th, so not him. I thought it might be Ryan Hagen, the Thomas fan that apparently was the namesake of the character but he was apparently born in December. So, no? Could it be the date they broke ground on production of Soder's Legend of the Lost Treasure? Or the date that Ryan was first concepted? Possibly? Maybe? I'm at a total loss here. Perhaps it is just totally random, but considering every other number has a story behind it, it seems weird that Ryan's doesn't. If anyone has any potential answers, share them in the comments. Moving up to 1173 now, which belongs to Victor. Victor is the Northwestern's designated works engine, who lives and works at the Sodor Steamworks. Victor first appeared in the 2009 movie Hero of the Rails, making him one of the series' first all CGI characters. Victor, in current day, does not wear a number, but he did prior to coming to Sodor. Victor comes from Cuba and worked at a sugar mill there until being sold off to the island of Sodor, to which he was transported by ship. He was painted yellow originally and wore the number 1173 on his side tanks. Victor got his number, again, directly from the engine he was based on. The real 1173 was built in 1915 and worked at, and I'm probably gonna butcher this, the Carlos Manuel de Cespedes Sugar Mill in Cuba until its withdrawal in 1993. Man, long working life. It is preserved and currently on display at the Patria Sugar Mill Museum. Moving on to 2020, which is worn by the lovely Duchess. Duchess, formerly Duchess of Loughborough, makes her first and only appearance in the series finale Thomas and the Royal Engine. 
She is the engine owned by the royal family, and transports them whenever they go anywhere by rail. Thomas and the Royal Engine was made in honor of the series' 75th anniversary in 2020, and Duchess's number is a direct nod to that. Duchess is based on the LMS Coronation class locomotives, with some notable design differences. Her number style and name seem to be based on theirs, with numbers on her cab sides and names based on royal titles, such as Duchess of Sutherland. Duchess of Loughborough was not a title held by any coronation class, nor was the number 2020, and is entirely fictional. Jumping up to a very recognizable number, 4472, who belongs to no other than the ever-famous Flying Scotsman. Flying Scotsman is a very real engine, but I'm sure you all know that, and is canonically Gordon's brother. This is my brother. They call him the Flying Scotsman. Indeed they do. It almost makes me sound famous, doesn't it? He is not owned by the Northwestern Railway, obviously, but has regularly visited Sodor on many occasions. Flying Scotsman has worn many numbers in his life. He is one of Sir Nigel Gresley's famous A1 class locomotives, and the third of the class built. When first outshopped from Doncaster in 1923, he bore the Great Northern number 1472 after his two predecessors, Great Northern, first of the class, with 1470, and Sir Frederick Banbury with 1471. Following the Great Northern's grouping into the Greater London and Northeastern Railway in 1923, 3000 was added to the numbers and Flying Scotsman became 4472. Being the namesake of the railway's named service, the Flying Scotsman, and breaking the 100 mile per hour speed record in 1934, Flying Scotsman became the poster child of the railway, with 4472 being its most famous number. The LNER renumbered its roster again in 1945, changing Scotsman's number to 103. Under British Railways ownership in 1948, 6,000 was added to all the LNER engine's numbers, making Scotsman's final BR number 60103. Flying Scotsman was preserved in 1963 and converted back to his more well-known condition with his apple green paint job and his 4472, as well as an added second tender to perform long distance rail tours. It was during this time period in 1967 when he first canonically visited Sodor and the book illustrations accurately depict him in his then-current state. 4472, second tender and all. In preservation, Scotsman regularly goes between his LNER and BR guises, swapping between 4472 and 60103. When he finally made his first full on-screen appearance in the 2016 movie The Great Race, the team opted to portray Scotsman in his more well-known guise, with his apple green paint, second tender, and of course the number, 4472. Jumping up to 6120 now, which is worn by Bell, the firefighting engine. Bell made her first appearance in the 2011 movie Day of the Diesels, and has been a fairly regular recurring character since then. Bell is based on a British Railway Standard 4 class tank engine, of course modified with water cannons fitted to her tanks. Her number is another that I'm at a total loss at. 6120 is indeed a number worn by several real-life engines, such as the LMS Royal Scott Class number 6120, Royal Inniskilling Fusilier, and a Great Western 6100 Class Prairie Tank, but no standard fours. I can't imagine it's based on a date of any sort, so I'm not really sure here. Perhaps Bell was meant to be a 6100 Class in her early concept art, but was changed over time and kept the number. Or perhaps it's just entirely random. If any of you have any answers, comment them below. Moving way up now to 33010, which belongs to the rather forgettable Neville. Neville first appeared in Season 9, and hasn't done much since. He was very much a one-and-done character, with not much to him. Neville is based on the very unusual looking Q1 class of the Southern Railway, a locomotive designed by Oliver Bully during wartime to be economical. 
an engine that was cheap to put together and maintain, hence its utilitarian appearance and lack of a running board, but also be powerful. And by God it worked, as the Q1s went on to be the most powerful 060 engines ever in Britain, and lasting till the very end of steam. Neville's number, 33010, did indeed belong to a real Q1, implying Neville simply is that Q1. In real life, 33010 was scrapped in 1964, though seemed to live on and find new life on Sodor in the Thomas universe. Only one Q1 is preserved, the first of the class, number 33001, and it can be seen today at the National Railway Museum in York wearing its original Southern Railway number, C1. The last steam engine on this list holds the mighty number 41241, and that is the ever-lovely Arthur. Arthur first debuted in Season 7, and has only had a few sparse appearances since then. His final design lacks a number, but his concept art by Robert Gall Galliers depicted him with one on his bunker, number 41241. This is directly pulled from the engine Arthur is based on. The real 41241 is the tank engine version of a 2MT class, and it lives today on the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. These engines all wore black in their working lives, but this one is special and has regularly worn red in preservation, similar to Arthur. It's worth noting that 41241 was built in 1949 under British Railways, and was never actually a part of the LMS, making Arthur's LMS just a little pointless. And this might be why they opted to ditch the number entirely on the final model. And that is all of the steam engine's numbers. Quite a big list, but honestly, it's not as big as I was expecting. Oh, but the fun doesn't stop here. We have a large list of diesel engine numbers to cover as well. Starting with number one, or officially D1, is Daisy, the ever fabulous diesel rail car. Daisy was the first ever diesel engine officially owned by the Northwestern Railway. Diesel was the first diesel engine on the island, but he was never purchased by Sir Topham Hatt. Daisy did not have an official BR number, as far as we know, prior to coming to Sodor, as she was specially built as a single unit and arrived fairly brand new before being put into service. Daisy was numbered D1 upon her purchase in 1960, though as far as I could tell, she has never visibly worn it in any of the illustrations. This is reflected in the TV series too, as neither her prop or her CGI model had a number on it. Her CGI model was going to have a nameplate though, which is fascinating. I wonder why they ditched it. Next up is number 2, officially D2, which belongs to the sadly forgotten Boko. Boko is a Class 28 Kobo Diesel Electric, first built in 1958. Boko was a real member of the class, wearing the number 5702, making him the second of the class built. The Class 28s were unfortunately problematic engines, suffering frequent failures, and they didn't last long in service. The real 5702 was sadly withdrawn and scrapped in 1968, though in the Thomas universe, found its way to the island of Sodor in 1965. Sir Topham Hatt expressed interest in purchasing the engine, and British Railways, already fed up with the class, happily allowed him to have the engine for trials. Boko proved satisfactory, and became a part of the fleet, gaining the number 2. Up next is number 3, or D3, which belongs to Bear. Bear is a Class 35 Hymac, and only ever appeared in the Railway Series books. He sadly never made the transition to TV. His original BR number was 7101, given to him when built in 1964. Like Donald and Douglas, his original number is an in-joke. The real 35s were only numbered up to 7100 in real life, making him a fictional add-on. 7101, with no name at this time, came to Sodor on trial in 1967, where he made a good impression on the steam engines. 
And following Henry's big super rescue venture, the engines all persuaded Sir Topham Hatt to keep him. British Railways had no problem parting with another one of their faulty diesels, and 7101 joined the Northwestern's fleet. He was numbered three, and also given a name, Bear, after the growling sounds his engine makes. His new number was one thing to rejoice over, but Bear appreciated his new name more, because, as he put it, It's nicer than just a number. Having a name means that you really belong. Hopping up to 10 now, which belongs to no other than the big bad himself, Diesel 10. Now it's not clear who actually owns Diesel 10. According to the original script for Thomas and the Magic Railroad, Diesel 10 was a new engine on the railway, implying he was owned by Sir Topham Hatt. The final movie makes him only a visitor, which means he's owned by someone that's never mentioned, likely meaning his 10 is not a Northwestern number. Ironically, Diesel 10 doesn't actually have a visible 10 on him, but he was going to at one point. Like Arthur, his concept art depicted him with a big 10 on his sides, but it was removed prior to the building of his final prop. Some name and number decals were in fact built for him, but ultimately went unused. According to Thomas, he's called Diesel 10 not because it is his number, but because he is... 10 out of 10! for devious deeds and brutal strength. Behind the scenes, the production crew called him Diesel 10 because he was factually the 10th diesel engine character introduced in the series at this point. Next up is 68, which belongs to Philip, the little diesel box cab. Philip made his debut in season 19, when he came to Sodor to become Knapford's new, and current, station pilot. Philip wears a big 68 on his sides, and apparently, no one knows why that's his number. This is the case in the show itself, as there is a whole episode in season 21, aptly called Philip's Number, where he's adamant on finding out why he is the number 68. Every other engine seems to have a number for a reason, except him. He asks her Topham Hat, who says he'll check the records for him. Later on, he bravely stops Gordon from running over a flock of sheep on the line, and then discovers there just so happened to be 68 sheep in the flock he saved. Sir Topham Hatt returns with Philip's file. I've done some research and discovered why you're number 68. The reason is... Oh, it doesn't really matter anymore, sir. Uh, what? But Philip tells him he doesn't want to know the real reason. He wants his 68 to be in honor of the amount of sheep he saved that day. I think it's pretty cool that they turned the mystery behind Philip's number into a whole story in the show, and intentionally kept the real reason a secret. This episode came out well after Philip was an established character though, so in real life, the reason Philip was designed with a 68 is because he, like Rosie, like Harvey, was the 68th standard gauge character introduced in the series. Good golly, that's a lot of engines. Moving on up to 199 now, which is held by no other than, well, D199. Also known by the steam engines as Spam Can, D199 arrived to Sodor on trial in 1967 with Bear. He was rude to the steam engines, and Karma came back and bit him hard when he failed hauling a good strain and had to be rescued by Henry. D199 is a class 46 peak. In real life, the peaks were numbered from 138 to 193. Another batch of 20 peaks were planned to be built, of which the number 199 would have been a part of. But they never came to be in favor of producing the new class 47s, thus making D199 yet another entirely fictional member of his class. For pity's sake, take this spam can away. It's failed. Spam can, fumed 199. I'm stow it, snapped the signalman, or I'll take my tin opener to you. Our next number chronologically is 261, which is worn by, well, D261. 
D261, also known as Class 40. These big diesels have got to get some better names, I swear. Was a visitor to Sodor in Season 4. He was rude to the steam engines, and well, Karma got him too, as he sucked up an inspector's hat in his air intake, which caused his engine to fail. He left Sodor when no one was looking, and not a soul missed him. Class 40 is, you guessed it, a Class 40. 261 is in fact a real number worn by one of the class, making D261 real. The real 261 entered service in 1960 and had a working life of about 23 years. In 1973, it was renumbered to 40061 under the new TOPS system, and in 1983, it was withdrawn and scrapped at crew. Several Class 40s survive in preservation, though D261 is not one of them. Now, in the books, however, Class 40 had a totally different number, D4711, which is baffling. Not only was this not a number worn by a real Class 40, but it's also totally unlike the numbering system, having four digits instead of three. I'm not really sure where Audrey or the Edwards got this number from. Perhaps it was pulled from some of the photos they used as reference? I genuinely could not tell you. It is a very rare flip-flop where the TV version actually has a real-life counterpart, and the book version doesn't. Jumping up to 1917 now, which is worn by the somewhat forgettable Stafford. Stafford is a fully electric engine who runs on a battery that has to be recharged. He made his first appearance in Season 16, and has been a regular sight in the shunting yard since. Stafford's strange-looking design is based on the North Staffordshire Railway's No. 1, a unique battery-powered locomotive designed to navigate the tight, narrow internal railway of the copper works it worked at. It had a fairly long working life, being finally retired in 1963. She is preserved, and can be seen today at Locomotion in Shildon. Stafford's name is obviously lifted from the railway this engine belonged to, the North Staffordshire, and his number, 1917, is a reference to the year the engine was built. Another funny detail about Stafford is his unique face shape, which isn't a circle or a rectangle like the others. It's instead in the shape of a UK-styled wall plug. A cheeky nod to his fuel type. Jumping all the way up to 2991 now, which is worn by the great Salty. Salty, Pride of the Seven Seas, is a dockyard diesel that first appeared in Season 6. Ever since his debut, he has consistently been the main shunter at Brendam Docks. Salty is a BR Class 07, and is surprisingly also a real engine. 14 of the 07s were built, with 2991 being the seventh of the class. 2991 was built in 1962 and had a service life of 11 years before being withdrawn in 1973. 2991 is preserved though and currently wearing BR blue and for a while the number 07007, which would have been its TOPS number had it not been withdrawn and was renumbered with the rest of the class. As of 2023, it is again wearing its original 2991. In the Thomas universe though, 2991 seemingly found a second life on the island of Sodor. Next up is another big number, 4002, which is worn by Frankie. Frankie, like Hurricane, first appeared in the 2017 movie Journey Beyond Sodor and works at the Mainland Steel Company with him. Frankie is based on a particular Hudswell Clark 060 diesel shunter that worked at the Manchester Ship Canal. This diesel, affectionately known as Billy, was numbered 4002, and Frankie's number is a direct pull from that. Billy is preserved and kept in working order by the East Lancashire Railway Diesel Group. There's a bit of some clever design going on with Frankie. She wears MSC on a plate above her face, which in canon refers to Mainland Steel Company, but it's also a sly reference to the place that her basis worked, the Manchester Ship Canal. And our final number of the video is the whopping 11001, 
which goes to no other than Dennis. Dennis debuted in season 9, and we haven't really seen him since. Dennis is based on a very specific diesel, number 11001, who, you guessed it, is where Dennis's number comes from, implying Dennis is this diesel. 11001 was designed by Oliver Bullied, the same guy who designed Neville and Rebecca's basises, and was built in 1949. It was an experimental prototype diesel with a larger engine than most and a rather high top speed. It wasn't exactly successful though, and 11001 was scrapped 10 years later in 1959 for being non-standard. In the Thomas universe, however, it seemed it was never scrapped and went on to find a second life on Sodor as a lazy diesel that tricks others into doing his work for him. Despite only one of these diesels ever existing in real life, two exist on Sodor. Another diesel, Norman, is also based on this engine, and according to his official character bio, he and Dennis are in fact brothers. And unlike his brother, Norman would prove to others that he is not lazy at all, if he was ever given the chance. Norman, though, does not wear a number. And I believe that was just about everyone. I know there's a few scattered background engines in the Railway series I skipped over, such as everyone's favorite, 31120. Or how could I have possibly missed 98462? Or the world-renowned 10751? Yeah, I intentionally skipped those ones, because there's not much to say about them. Bill and Ben also have numbers in the books, Sodor China Clay 1 and 2, but again, I mean, what's there to say about them? But tell me, was there anyone else that I missed in this video? Anyone significant that you believe I should have covered? Tell me below in the comments. Now, I don't have really all that much to update you all on here. My New Year's video pretty much covered it all. I would like to just give a big thank you to the very positive response Tugs the Lighthouse edit has gotten so far. Everyone seems to be fairly happy with it, which of course makes me happy. This was a project that I did purely for fun. It started out as just a small test thing and it turned into something much bigger, and it was so satisfying when I finally finished it. The new episodes are still coming out. A new one is being posted daily until all 13 are out. At the time of this video being posted, episode 5 should be up. We've still got 8 more to go, so head on over and subscribe to the Lucky Tug if you haven't already, so you don't miss them. And once again, I just want to give a big thank you to my patrons for all the continued support. You all are fantastic, and I've been enjoying my monthly Q&A sessions with you all. If you'd like to hop aboard the Patreon train, the link is below in the description. That's all from me, folks. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you all in the next one.